The DC ruins are a radioactive maze of bombed out buildings and crumbling metro tunnels, occupied by lethal traps and terrifying monsters. Throughout production, it was the centerpiece of Bethesda's first entry, and they planned for it to have a truly vast scale, unlike anything the series had seen before. However, their grand plans would run into a labyrinthian roadblock at the end of development, resulting in them cutting out over half the city. This is the development and cut content of the DC Ruins. Early in development, Bethesda attempted to make the entirety of the DC ruins in the Wasteland, as lead level designer Joel Burgess revealed. For all her grandeur, DC also presented us with some design quandaries that we had never encountered before. Early prototypes showed us that simply building a city layout in the open world was not only a performance nightmare, but also prevented us from creating the kinds of gameplay scenarios we were eager to attempt. So instead of DC being an enormous open area on the world map, we hatched a plan to focus on the individual areas and neighborhoods of the city. Each of these neighborhoods is its own large outdoor area. This allowed us to clearly define the personality of every neighborhood, and specifically tailor gameplay to populate each. Connectivity became a well-worn part of our vocabulary while working on Fallout 3, particularly when discussing DC. One of our usual level design concerns is to avoid the player exploring and clearing a level, only to have to backtrack through empty hallways to escape. For DC, achieving a believable world design involved allowing multiple ways in and out of an area. We created alternate routes that circled back to an exit, or especially downtown, allow the player to pop up in a new location entirely. This elegantly avoided the issue of backtracking, but made it more difficult to design gameplay to be compelling regardless of the player's direction through it. The city is laced with dozens of such small and versatile connections. These interior locations became instrumental in the design of DC because their multiple entrances allowed us to connect each neighborhood to the others as part of an elaborate neighborhood of ruined tunnels and structure. After scrapping the open world version, Bethesda then envisioned DC being split across 26 distinct neighborhoods each contained in their own world space separate from the Wasteland, as Joel Burgess recounted in a GDC presentation. In the final game, there are 12 or 13, I think, neighborhoods in the game. The original uh, concept of the game had 26. However, in the final game, there are only 12. Each of the 26 neighborhoods were connected to one another by a complex network of dungeons and metro tunnels. The late great Adam Adewix was actively making art for some of the cut world spaces as late as September of 2007, just a year away from the game's release in October of 2008. At some point seemingly in late 2007, the developers realized the maze-like city was far too complex to connect together in a coherent way, and made the decision to cut over half of it. As Emil Polarulo stated, These maps were done and polished, but Todd thought they had to go. You just have to be honest with yourself and admit when something isn't working. Many of the lost neighborhoods were at least partially completed before being deleted, though it's unknown how far along they got, as Bethesda ruthlessly deleted the majority of content related to them. Some of the more promising interiors from the cut areas would be recycled into the wasteland or the remaining DC ruins. After these cuts, the remaining neighborhoods and some of the locations linked to them were hastily moved around the map then reconnected to nearby locations, often in confusing ways that contradict in-game dialogue and directories. 
This serial killer-esque image depicts the developers attempting to reconnect the remaining world spaces back together on the floor of one of their offices. Each photo is a printout of a neighborhood, metro tunnel, or dungeon, and those that connect to one another are tied together by string. Tickets, please. Thank you for riding with Metro. The 26 neighborhoods were meant to be connected primarily via Metro tunnels, and during a blog post, Joel Burgess stated, While many tunnels have collapsed and stations have been rendered inaccessible, the player can still make use of in-game cues such as maps and station signs to navigate the innards of DC. The largest continuous set of tunnels allows the player to reach almost any neighborhood without needing to go above ground. Negotiating derelict train tunnels and frequently passing through mingled areas, such as collapsed basements and natural caves exposed within the decaying underground. This also helped us contrast the overworld and underground of DC through gameplay. While the ruins of DC are overrun with super mutants and unchecked mercenary patrols, the underground areas are refuge to generally weaker denizens such as feral ghouls and rad roaches. Though it is harder to avoid conflict in these claustrophobic confines. He mentioned the presence of in-game cues to help you explore DC, and metros do have a map that places stations on white, red, or blue metro lines. However, the maps are essentially useless as the player typically has no way to tell which station they're in, or how it connects to other neighborhoods. This fan-made map shows what the actual way out looks like, and illustrates just how illogical the in-game directory really is. Many metro stations aren't shown on the map at all, and others present on it don't seem to have an in-game equivalent, like FDR Island, Platts, and Becton. Though throughout this video, we'll see that they might actually exist in the most confusing way possible. There aren't enough exits on it to accommodate all of the cut world spaces either, implying it was only made after at least some of them were removed. There's still an unused paper map that was meant to help the player navigate from one station to another, and a cut marker that would have shown you which station you were at. These were even set up at one point, as one of these markers erroneously still appears on a concrete pillar in Metro Central, even though the map itself was deleted. By placing a map on top of it, we can see how it was originally intended to appear. There's a second cut map marker using the same naming convention that was likely meant to be used in conjunction with the map as well. I suspect the map and markers were cut as it was made earlier in development and no longer represented the final way out of the city. Metro security protocol initializing. The earliest release footage of the game featured a battle between a Protectron and Super Mutants in a Metro tunnel. Interestingly, it showed a decal for Metro Protectrons that doesn't appear in the final game. It has a little M on its chest and some taxi-like decals for its arm lasers. The texture still exists and it's unknown why it was removed, as having a Metro variant would have been a genuinely cool detail. The DC neighborhoods are numbered 1 through 18, but looking at their numbering in the GEC, you'll notice that many are skipped over and missing. Encounter zones are used to define specifics of combat in a given area. For example, setting the minimum level of enemies in a dungeon, or if they respawn after dying. The encounter zones are still present for 12 of the cut neighborhoods, leaving two mysterious areas that we know almost nothing about. While Bethesda was very effective at deleting much of what was cut, there's enough left over for us to dive into and piece together what it would have been like. Chevy Chase is the first DC neighborhood, and was inspired by an actual neighborhood of the same name north of Georgetown. The Tentley Town slash Friendship Metro Station connects Chevy Chase to the Wasteland. Beside the Wasteland entrance, there's some strange terrain and a disabled map marker that seems to represent the Metro Station. 
There's a plethora of other disabled map markers for various DC neighborhoods and the locations that link to them. Found all throughout DC in the wasteland, many in inaccessible areas. It's unknown what their purpose was, but it's possible they were used to block out the space for each neighborhood on the world map. Many of these markers still exist for cut neighborhoods and give us a good idea of where they would have been placed. There's an unused sign that says southbound to Tentley Town, and this might be an insignificant cut prop, but it's plausible that a destroyed section of the metro station once led to another neighborhood. There's an unused version of Chevy Chase made for a press demo, where the player blew up Megaton from the rooftop of Galaxy News Radio. Interestingly, the buildings around GNR are shuffled around compared to the final layout, and the rooftop area was removed entirely. It's possible that Tenpenny Tower was originally placed in Chevy Chase, as the location is missing from the wasteland in an early developer map. It's definitely a tenuous theory, but certainly possible as the main quest line went through massive changes. It would also explain a series of cut lines called Tenpenny Tower Radio. This unused radio station would have been hosted by Alistair Tenpenny, and these lines even predate the dialogue for GNR Radio. This is Tenpenny Tower Radio, music and inspiring talk for forward thinking people. You're listening to Tenpenny Tower Radio, the sound of progress. This is Tenpenny Tower Radio. Thank you for listening to Tenpenny Tower Radio service, brought to you by Alistair Tenpenny. The poor man wonders why he is poor. The rich man knows why he is rich. Let us release our fears of the past into our hopes for the future. The beggar must lay down his cup, for a man needs both hands to grasp the future. All men were created equal. Not all men remain so. Never wonder for a moment if you're worthy of the benefits you possess. Rather wonder always if you have utilized them to their fullest. On that vast plain of dust, we will raise new cities. And like the phoenix, spread the wings of new life and take flight. We must turn our thoughts away from that which is imperfect and impure. The poor man wishes for prosperity. The rich man makes his own. This has been a Tenpenny Truism. And now, a Tenpenny Truism. And now, it's time for another Tenpenny Truism. On the other hand, Tenpenny Tower might have been placed here temporarily for the demo, the latter of which would explain this unused Pip-Boy image of Galaxy News Radio, titled Tenpenny Tower in the game files. It's hard to say in the end, but I suspect all of these changes were simply made for the demo. The second DC world space was cut and called Adams Morgan, based on a real-world neighborhood north of the White House. Adam Adewix referenced it during the F3 documentary, stating, For me, uh, a lot of times when you design the architecture, and especially in a sci-fi sense, and then you walk down that street, uh, there's a lot of material for you to play with. Uh, looking at a lot of buildings, I would walk in Adams Morgan and they'd see a cluster of houses and they'd say, wow, that's amazing. All right, we put a lot of chrome flanges on them, but just the configurations of things would give you ideas and one would bounce off of the other. So it was a continuous process. There's an unused variant of rad roaches called Adams Morgan Roach and it's a part of the Robco Pest Faction. This makes robots and rad roaches neutral to each other, implying there was some kind of location involving both creatures and Adams Morgan. Northeast of Minefield, there's a crazy wastelander named the Roach King, sitting on a rocket throne in the middle of nowhere, protected by pet rad roaches. His form ID was made only a few entries after the cut Adams Morgan Roach, suggesting the NPC was originally planned to be found in this cut area. Even further, their AI package uses a prefix named FDCC, something only utilized for DC neighborhoods. In addition, the Roach King is a part of the Robco Pest Faction, and it would have been more logical to find this encounter inside of a building in the city, rather than in the wilderness of the wasteland. I got this list of people. Ghoul bigots. Real scum. I've only got four guys left on the list. 
Started out with 11. All of them hate ghouls and treat us like we're zombies. During the quest, gotta shoot him in the head. Mr. Crowley mentions he has a list of the victims he wants you to kill, but he doesn't give the list to you. The hit list note does exist though, and is from much earlier in development. Dukoff uses an entirely different name, Vando, and the Adams Morgan neighborhood is referenced. It seems this note was cut alongside the neighborhood, and they strangely never replaced it. A great crack shall open in the earth and swallow the non-believers, and they shall weep, 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 tears and salt and earth and dirt. In Seaward Square, there's an encounter involving an insane preacher who broadcasts his message across the area. He's been up there for days. He's got all of those minds wired to a trigger. He won't let anyone in or out of the alley. If I try to leave, he'll set them off, but I can't stay here any longer. Upon getting close to his location, a character that the preacher is keeping hostage greets you, revealing that if he attempts to leave, the preacher will set off explosives. This doesn't make any sense though, because the hostage is out of range of the explosives and could simply walk away, as he's not even visible from the preacher's location on the second floor of an inaccessible building down the alleyway. If you avoid speaking to the hostage, he'll sometimes just run straight into the alley and get blown up. If you continue down the path, the Preacher will detonate a series of mini nukes and frag mines placed below him. However, if you sneak around the alleyway and enter from the other side, you'll find the mines strangely aren't even armed. The encounter was moved from this cut world space, as the Preacher's internal ID is Adams Morgan Preacher. Strangely, the hostage is named Crazy Wastelander, despite the Preacher being the crazy one and his dialogue is even named Wastelander Trick, maybe meaning that something nefarious was going on in his part too. I can't help but wonder if this encounter is so nonsensical because it was moved from an entirely different area. There are no other remnants, but two of the three characters who would have appeared in Adams Morgan were insane. This begs the question if their sanity was affected by some element of the neighborhood, but we'll likely never have an answer. DC World 3 is DuPont Circle, based on the real residential neighborhood of the same name found east of Georgetown. By Lady Frumperton's fashions, there's a building that has a billboard on the side of it. If you disable the building and nearby props, you'll find a depression in the ground that perfectly fits a metro entrance. It's possible this was the original location of an existing metro, a cut metro leading to a lost neighborhood, or simply a random hole made by mistake while crafting the terrain. The alley blocked by rubble on the other side of Galaxy News Radio seems to have been accessible at one point, as there's a fully textured path beneath it that connects to another section of the neighborhood. There's a pair of out-of-bounds buildings you can't see from the playable area. It seems the rubble and ground texture next to GNR wasn't always stacked so high, as they are semi-visible once you strip them away. The fourth neighborhood was Rock Creek Estates, and it's the only cut neighborhood that appears in the final build, albeit in a typically inaccessible state. There's a world space called Tess QA World that contains a very early version of the cut ruin, and it seems it only avoided being deleted because it was used for testing. Visually, it's completely unlike any area in the final release, containing a massive number of oversized burned trees, many of which are five times larger than the model's default size. This area is almost certainly Bethesda's take on Rock Creek Park, a real-world urban park that takes up a significant portion of DC. Interestingly, there's an unused water type that shares the area's prefix, suggesting the real, non-test version of the world space was in a more complete state before it was removed. There's a character named Grandma Sparkle found at the location Wilhelm's Wharf, but she was originally intended for Rock Creek. Well, look at this. We got us a wanderer all the way out here in Wilms Wharf. In her initial greeting, she comments on how you're wandering all the way out here. 
The line wouldn't have been out of place if she was still found in the middle of the woods in a destroyed park, but her location in the final game isn't far from Megaton, Greyditch, and the Citadel, making this greeting a strange remnant of her origin. There are unused AI packages for Talon Company and Regulator Hit Squads that would have been searching for the player at Rock Creek. Grandma Sparkle even mentions this in the final game, though a pair of hit squads were moved to her final position. Some fellas came out here a while ago that said they was looking for some do-gooder that came out from one of them vaults. I told them I ain't seen nobody like that and sent them on their way. They might still be around here, though, if you think you can help them. The line she says is only meant for players with good karma, but the line's condition erroneously checks her karma instead of the player. Her karma is good, and as a result, the dialogue intended for evil players can never be heard normally. Some fellas came by here a while ago that said they was looking for some troublemaker that came out from one of them vaults. If you ask her what she's doing all the way out here, she replies, My boys are hunting lurks. Finest meat you could get, but he don't move around in your stomach like Mole Rack does. However, her boys are never around despite being mentioned in the official guide. Form IDs link her to a group of characters named Rock Creek Hunters that are placed in the cut world space, suggesting that these hunters were her sons. Each of the hunters has unique dialogue they play as they patrol around Rock Creek. Fucking yow guy. Get out of here, guy. I got a present for you. Come on, you smelly bastards. Thought I heard something over here. Yoo-hoo! Yao Guy! Come on out! Could've sworn I saw some movement back there. One, two, got a bullet for you. Let's go, you hairy fucks, I ain't got all day. Grandma Sparkle even has unused variants of the hunter lines, implying she would've hunted alongside them. Could've sworn I saw some movement back there. One, two, got a bullet for you. Just as soon take your head off as look at you. Watch yourself out here. They're all over. She also states that Meyer lurks are all over, even though there are none near her final position. But fittingly, there are quite a few Meyer lurks set up to spawn in Rock Creek that they would have hunted. The hunters have dialogue where they mention a Yaogwai cave nearby, and the location can still be found, guarded by several of the monsters. Notably, Sparkle still mentions them when you barter with her, even though there are no Yaogwai around here either. You always need bullets. Takes damn near a hundred of them to kill a Gwai. There's a location called Yaogwai Den in the final game, which leads to a second cell named Yaogwai Tunnels. Looking at form IDs, there's a massive disparity between the creation of the den and the tunnels, and it's possible the den area was originally connected to Rock Creek. Supporting this, the tunnel's interior has two exits, and there are seemingly two entrances into the Yaogwai Caves in the Rock Creek world space. So it's possible the tunnel's level was merged into Yaogwai Den once Rock Creek was removed. This evidence is tenuous at best, however, and the Yaogwai Cave in Rock Creek might have just led to an entirely different cut area. There's a dungeon called Rock Creek Caverns, a cave system populated by Mireworks that empties out into an inaccessible metro tunnel. Apart from sharing a similar name, the deepest part of the caverns has an acoustic space that extends far beyond the tunnel, suggesting it was once longer. It's possible the tunnel was more expansive because it connected to Rock Creek and was shortened when the world space was axed. There are also several mysterious cave entrances in the cut world space that it might have connected to. One at the northern end of the world space has cell coordinates that are very close to the cavern's entrance. The caverns are controlled by Mirelurks, and there's even a group of them right outside this cave entrance in Rock Creek. There's a pool of water not far from the area containing Yaogwai and Rock Creek. Intriguingly, another cave entrance is hidden here under the water and a layer of the ground. Given its in-game location, it might have been one of the entrances into the neighborhood. There are three unused activators named Rock Creek Intern that use a skeleton torso as a model, but it's anyone's guess what they were meant for. 
The plexiglass map found at the Citadel is from an earlier iteration in development, and in it the northeastern highlight of DC extends further north, potentially a remnant of Rock Creek's original position. After Rock Creek was cut, Wolheim's Wharf was moved to the Wasteland. Supporting this, the entrance to her shack is facing southeast. But once you enter, you'll see the compass is facing northeast. And this is seemingly because the marker that sets where north appears on the compass wasn't updated when it was moved from Rock Creek. There's a single house in Rock Creek that seems to be an earlier version of Wilhelm's Wharf. The door is no longer linked to an interior, but one of the hunters is set to spawn here. There's some ammo boxes and some chairs the hunters would have sat on. If you place the final version of the shack's interior over the early version, the compass coordinates line up roughly north. Not far from Wilhelm's Wharf in the Wasteland, there's a bridge on the world map that crosses the Potomac River. However, there are no bridges here and it seems they were deleted, perhaps during the time the wharf was moved. Finally, there's an inaccessible metro entrance near Galaxy News Radio and Chevy Chase, and a single nearby sign naming it GNR Plaza. Intriguingly, the form ID for the rubble that blocks the entrance was one of the last additions to the cell, and it's likely this once connected to one of the cut neighborhoods. Rock Creek and Chevy Chase border one another in real life, and I suspect they were once linked together here. The fifth neighborhood is Tacoma Park, modeled after the real city of Tacoma Park, Maryland. There's an unused sign for 2nd Street, and its IRL location implies it would have appeared in either Tacoma Park or Rock Creek. But that's speculation based on the real world, and F3's world isn't a one-to-one -one recreation of DC. There's another cut sign for Santiago Drive, but it doesn't appear to have a real-world equivalent, and it's unknown where it would have been found. DC 6 is Vernon Square, based on the real neighborhood of Mount Vernon Square. The name of the lines asking Riley or Butcher how to reach Vernon Square use the prefix Columbia Heights. An entirely separate neighborhood pretty far from Vernon Square that's notably adjacent to Adams Morgan. It's unclear if this means that Riley's quest originally took place in a cut neighborhood, or if Vernon Square was originally planned to be Columbia Heights. There are signs inside Vernon Metro Station that inform you the next stop is Beckton Station. But this station doesn't exist and instead the exit confusingly leads to Metro Junction. It's possible that Metro Junction is Beckton Station, or maybe Beckton Station connected to Rock Creek and was scrapped alongside the neighborhood. Then the signs were recycled for Vernon Square. Our Lady of Hope Hospital is a dungeon found in Vernon Square, and there's an older version of the exterior hidden out of bounds behind the actual hospital. There is also an earlier version of the location sign left over. Behind the entrance to Freedom Street Station, there's a section of road and sidewalk that typically goes unseen. West of the entrance to Metro Junction, there's a street blocked by rubble that has raised terrain. Beneath the ground, there's another section of road complete with a sidewalk you can never see either. By lowering the ground level and deleting the props, you can see what it would have looked like. By the Statesman, there's another blocked off street. Underneath the ground and rubble, there's yet another large series of streets and sidewalk you'll never see. Beneath the sidewalk along the Statesman, you can find a terminal used to play the distress beacon utilized in the quest Riley's Rangers. Beside this street inside of a building, there's a multibound. Multibound occlusion calling is used to disable objects that are out of sight from the player to improve performance. The presence of a multibound in this inaccessible space means it was likely once a playable area. Next to Vault Tech HQ, there's a ruined building, and inside of it, another street continues out of bounds. Not far from here down Patney Drive, there's more roads and sidewalks outside the playable area. 
By Vernon Street Station, there are also some more hidden sidewalk pieces. Not far from the theater, another road continues on out of sight beyond what's typically visible. There's no other area in the game that has such an extensive hidden road system. Comparing these roads to the real neighborhood suggests these are from an early attempt at an accurate recreation of Vernon Square's road system. According to the door name of the Statesman Hotel, it was once called the Federalist. This might somehow be related to the Federalist Lounge and Tenpenny Tower, the only other place this name is utilized. In-game, the Statesman roof is contained in its own world space, but it was apparently once a part of Vernon Square itself. As there's an inaccessible cell named Statesman Roof Temp placed out of bounds behind the hotel. At one point in development, Vernon Square heavily featured Raiders, as the cell that contains Abernathy Station is named MVS Raider Tower internally. A pair of nearby super mutants are also named MVS Raider Pather. There's a dungeon near the theater named Sewer Entrance, which is strangely empty even though there's evidence of someone living there. There's an unused marker here named Raider Wander, implying it was populated by raiders that were later cut. There's also several other cut AI packages using this prefix. In the final game, the only enemies in the world space are super mutants, and it's unknown why it was altered so drastically. The seventh neighborhood was Freedom Street and was cut, but it might have been based on Freedom Plaza a stone plaza that depicts Pierre L'Enfant's architectural plans for DC. Freedom Street Station appears, but connects only Vernon Square and Pennsylvania Avenue to Metro Central. Interestingly, the eastbound signs advertising Vernon Square and Metro Central were added much later than the rest of the area's props, and it likely once led to another area, possibly Freedom Street. In addition, multiple unused signs reveal Freedom Street was originally the first exit east of Metro Central. There's an unused acoustic marker outside the exit to Vernon Square and Freedom Street Station, and this seems to be another remnant of the late change. There's a tunnel blocked off by rubble in Metro Central between Freedom Street and Vernon Tunnel. Behind the rubble, there's a sewer exit complete with a skylight and a working door that can never be seen. But the door is no longer linked to anything. There's no telling where it led, but it's plausible it was another entrance into Freedom Street. There's an unused encounter zone that reveals the neighborhood would have had a sewer dungeon. Another unused encounter zone named Infested Sewers was made directly after Freedom Street Sewer and both use the Y area prefix, something no other zones use. It's possible that Infested Sewers was another entrance into Freedom Street, or possibly another cut neighborhood altogether. DC-8 is Pennsylvania Avenue, based on the real street that connects the Capitol building to the White House. There's a collapsed underground parking lot found near Freedom Street Station inhabited by a scavenger. It seems the area was intended to have an actual parking garage, but it was partially deleted and then covered up by rubble. There's still some landscape that had an asphalt texture applied to it inside of the building you normally can't see. There's an unused sign that says Federal Trade Bureau, which was potentially inspired by the real Federal Trade Commission building on Pennsylvania Avenue. It was apparently the very first sign added to the GEC in development, and interestingly it's the only sign I'm aware of that doesn't have a rust decal applied to it. There's no other remnant of the building's existence though, and it was likely cut early before much work had been done. Metro Central was originally named Metro Center according to an in-game poster, and it's even the internal name of the area. The White House is an atomic crater, but intriguingly everything in the cell was added much later in development compared to the rest of the neighborhood. 
This suggests it went through a significant revision, and during a retrospective on the game, Istvan Paley confirmed this. While we're working on, on DC, we realized that we had not done the, uh, the White House yet, and we didn't really have room on the schedule to, to do the White House. We had done a lot of the other landmarks and did ruins of them um, scattered throughout the city, but that was kind of a major one. And we were kind of running out of time, like, well, what do we do? It's like, just put a crater. The White House would have been the first thing they took up. So let's just wipe it. It doesn't exist here. Uh, it was sort of an Indiana Jones, you know, shoot the guy, the whip kind of moment for us, but it, it did the trick, and I think people got a, got a kick out of that. This is interesting because the White House was shown on an early developer map, and nearly every real monument has a quest tied to them. If there was more time, we likely would have had another location linked to a quest, but the White House was yet another casualty of the game's troubled development. On the other hand, it was fitting for it to be destroyed, given that it would have been a high-priority target in a global nuclear war. The mall is DC World 9, representing the real area between the Capitol Building and Lincoln Memorial. If you clip behind the Museum of Technology, you'll find a section of road covered up by rubble and some raised ground textures. South of the Washington Monument, there's a four-way section of road, and even further beyond that, there's another very long section. All three of these line up together almost perfectly, suggesting a road once ran from the side of the Capitol building, past the Tech Museum, all the way behind the Washington Monument. By deleting some buildings, lowering the terrain, and placing more roads, you can see just how large this area actually is. The road is even still depicted on the world map, but F3's world map is much less accurate than New Vegas's, so I wouldn't speculate too much on this. There's a curved road underground in front of the Capitol building, but this is unrelated to the other roads we just looked at, and is maybe from an early block out of the Capitol. Another one of the same roads is apparently placed nearby underground, but for whatever reason the road isn't visible in-game or in the GEC. Directly beside the Museum of History, there's a street blocked by rubble. There's another section of road back here, and some hand-placed sidewalk around a nearby building you'll never see. The Potomac is east of the Lincoln Memorial in real life, but in-game, buildings are blocking your view. However, there's what appears to be the start of work on a large riverbed out of bounds to the east including an incomplete rock face, but this was scrapped for whatever reason. On the westernmost section of the dip, there's some trees and rocks that can never be seen due to buildings that were placed right on top of them. Given its current layout, I'm not sure how this ever could have been visible to the player, but perhaps you could once traverse the area beyond the walls around the Lincoln Memorial. By adjusting the water height, we can get an idea of how impressive this would have been, especially if there were buildings on the other side of the river. The top of the Washington Monument appears to be a part of the mall, but clipping out of bounds, you can see it's just a floating platform contained in its own world space. Beneath it there's a road, a loading door used for teleporting the player back to ground level, and a random rubble prop that seems to have been copy and pasted by mistake. There's an earlier version of this area contained in a world space called Monument Top. Everything was deleted except for some nav mesh and the ground texture, the latter of which interestingly shows a much different zigzagging layout for the Super Mutant Trenches. For comparison, here's how they appear in game. The museum station was apparently called Smithsonian at one point, as an in-game poster still gives it that title. It seems likely the Museum of Technology was originally called the Smithsonian, as it is placed in essentially the same spot as the real Air and Space Museum, and it is the closest location to Museum Station. This museum went through a major rework as the cells used new in their name, and the texture sheet for the area mentions a roof exit, a robotics exhibit, and a transportation exhibit, none of which are present in-game. 
In the Museum of History's entrance hall, there are three inaccessible exhibits. The Alaskan Liberation from the Red Chinese exhibit still has unused nav mesh leading to its entrance underneath the rubble, something that's notably missing from the other blocked off exhibits. It appears it was once going to be accessible, and was intended as a tie-in to the game's first DLC, Operation Anchorage. The museum's numbering also skips over a cell, revealing another interior was either removed or merged into an existing section. Underworld is a ghoul settlement found inside the Museum of History, but it seems it was originally placed in a different location on the mall. You enter the Museum of History entrance cell from the mall, and this connects to Underworld and the lower offices. The door inside the lower offices that links to the entrance area is named Museum American to DC World 9, revealing it originally led to the mall instead of the entrance hall where Underworld is found. In fact, the hall containing the entrance to Underworld wasn't added until much, much later in development. Many characters mention that Underworld is underground. We were driven underground, um, almost 50 years ago now. Between the super mutants, the beasts, and you crazy humans, it's not safe up there. So we stay down here, out of sight and out of trouble. Oh, we hardly ever get humans down here these days. Evening. Not that you can really tell down here. Good morning, I think. Is it morning? I can never tell. Are you kidding? I'm a zombie who lives underground. I think you can guess how I am. We don't get a lot of your kind down here. There are a lot more of us down here than there are of you, smooth skin. You just behave yourself. This checks out given its namesake, but in game it appears to be on ground level as you don't descend any stairs to reach it. My bad idea, I'm afraid. I had a stealth boy which allowed me to slip off the roof unnoticed. The plan was to get back to get some help. I was almost at the street when a super mutant jumped me. Damn near ripped my arm off in the process. Last thing I remember was falling into a culvert. Now I'm here. Some rescue attempt, huh? Riley mentioned she fell into a culvert in Vernon Square and woke up in Underworld. One of them, get by us. Make it all the way to uh, melted human town. The mutants at the Statesman even know she escaped there, despite the fact that two areas are far apart from each other and aren't connected by metro tunnels. Other characters seem to imply that Underworld is entered via underground tunnels, which might have been sewers or a metro. When asked about Riley, Dr. Barrows mentions that she would have died if she was in the tunnels any longer. She was just brought in by a few others. They found her bleeding to death at the entrance to the city here. If she'd been out in the tunnels any longer, she'd have been someone's meal by now. Greta also has a conversation line where she tells another character to go hunt rats in the tunnels. If you don't like what we have, Crowley, you can always go hunt rats in the tunnels with the ferals. Further, some characters comment on the air quality, and others refer to areas that don't even exist, including a generator room, a common area, and water filtration. Now wouldn't it be a shame if your ventilation went down and all your customers went to Carol's? Just think about it, Azrakal. Air is off in the common house again. It stinks of sweaty death down there, I swear. Every day it's something new. Every day there's something new. The generators go down, the water has funk in it, the air filters die. Don't let the smell get to you. <coughs> Terrible air down here. I hope you don't mind the smell. I know how sensitive you humans can be. It's a miracle that some of this shit works in the first place. I guess it's just a matter of time. Winthrop. I was wondering if you could take a look at the generator down in that common area. <sighs> yeah, just east of here. Bunch of guys with guns are holed up there. Quinn also mentions the Lincoln Memorial is east of Underworld, which is totally wrong considering the memorial is placed on the southwest edge of the mall. This might be a reference to the original entrance of Underworld or a simple recording mistake. 
Now, all of this could be a weird reference to the Museum of History being right behind the entrance to Museum Station. However, Greta mentions the tunnels have ferals, and Museum Station is occupied exclusively by raiders and radroaches. In retrospect, it's confusing there would even be a fine art exhibit found inside the Museum of History. This is simply speculation, but it's possible Underworld was initially planned to appear inside or underneath the National Gallery of Art, which is also located on the mall in real life. It's also possible there was a direct connection between Underworld and Museum Station in early layouts. A ghoul city inside of a metro would have been a great location, and the metros could have been vastly improved by having more settlements inside of them. Lastly, there's a working safe in the inaccessible room containing glowing ones in the chop shop. Even stranger, it's a unique container set up to spawn various medical items, meaning the room might have been accessible at one point, though it could just be nonsensical level design. The tenth neighborhood is L'Enfant Plaza, inspired by a commercial area in southwest DC. Most neighborhoods have a cell named Origin inside the playable area that contains a metro entrance. Von Font's origin cell is strangely out of bounds west of Hazmat Disposal Site, suggesting it saw a major rework during production. Washington Monument is visible to the northwest in Von Font, but its actual location on the world map is to the northeast, implying the neighborhood was moved west and the LOD was never updated. The irradiated metro location connects the wasteland to L'Enfant and is placed directly west of the neighborhood. However, you go south through the interior to reach L'Enfant. Additionally, you exit the metro facing west, but come out into the area facing northwest, all of which suggests the neighborhood was also further south at some point. There's a cell named Irradiated Sewer Exterior Old, placed south of the wasteland entrance in an inaccessible area, suggesting it was moved when the other neighborhoods were cut. There is a row of houses beside the entrance to Irradiated Metro, and behind them there is an area that has strangely detailed terrain, perhaps another remnant of the neighborhood being altered. There is a cell named L'Enfant Tunnel, a collapsed car tunnel protected by super mutants. Inside the tunnel, there's a cache of items and it seems to be a part of the super mutant camp. However, beneath the ground, there's a dead ghoul named Mercenary, and this is the only place this NPC is used. This was likely the owner of the hideout, and it seems she was dragged underground by mistake, as she isn't disabled. There is even still blood on the trunk and bedroll, which doesn't make sense without a body. There's an activator named Outcast Walk Trigger placed partially over the tunnel and her body. It's linked to the nearby mutants, and when the player enters the trigger, they walk out of her camp. The activator stretches across to another cell named Enclave Camp DC-01. The area does feature a vertebrae dropping off Enclave troops, but there's no Enclave Camp here and DC-01 is Chevy Chase. It's possible this was a typo, or that the encounter was moved from Chevy Chase, which notably features no Enclave camps either. The spelling of the Capitol Post building changed during production, as several loading screens and internal files spell it differently than the sign and location name in the final game. The 11th neighborhood is Georgetown, based on a historic neighborhood of the same name. There's an unused sign for Chesapeake and Ohio Canal, and a portion of the area does appear in an unmarked location in Georgetown. The cut sign was replaced by the more opulent one that appears in-game. There's an unused message that would have been found in the interior of La Mason Beauregard in Georgetown. It amusingly states, On the skeleton, you find a note that reads, Dear World, Fuck You. Love, J.E. Truly Bethesda's Pulitzer Prize-winning writing at its best. 
The message mentions it would have been found on a skeleton, and there's two skeletons by the bar. Suspiciously, there's a third skeleton placed inside of a rubble pile not far from here you can never see. I get why they cut the note, but I'm not sure why they stuffed the skeleton into the ceiling. Seaward Square is the 12th neighborhood and based on a real square and park. Fittingly, its encounter zone is named Seaward Park, implying its name shifted during development. The metro station southeast of Seaward Square is named Eastern Market in real life, and there's even an unused encounter zone named Eastern Market. This seems to have been the early name for Anacostia Crossing Station, and an in-game poster still depicts the original name. There's an unused terminal intended for the DC Office of Urban Planning, and its welcome screen would have read, DC Metro Office of Urban Planning Project Management System, Capital Beltway Reconstruction Project. You are logged in as project leader, please make your selection. This is interesting as the Capitol Beltway is a real interstate that runs around and through DC, notably cutting through several neighborhoods including Rock Creek. This highway does appear in the wasteland, but the cut neighborhoods might be why the terminal was never used. Additionally, there are empty menu options on this terminal for Project Overview, Project Mission Statement, Project Status, About the System, and Reboot System. DC-13 was named Southwest Waterfront, based on a neighborhood centered around a marina along the Potomac south of the mall. Perhaps Southwest Waterfront would have been distinct by being built along the water, unlike all of the other neighborhoods. There's an interior outside Grey Ditch named Outpost that contains a super mutant taken hostage by some hostile ghouls. The name of the interior exit door reveals it was originally placed inside Southwest Waterfront. The cell the exterior appears in is named Wasteland Encounter 08. And interestingly, the cell where the Roach King appears shares the same prefix. Considering both of these encounters were removed from cut world spaces, it's possible that all of the encounters using this prefix were recycled. There's an unused empty interior cell named Waterfront Sewage that by its name would have appeared here as well. Franklin Metro Utility is a dungeon that empties out into Falls Church. There's a collapsed tunnel here, and under it there's litter that can never be seen. It's possible this tunnel was covered up once one of the neighborhoods was cut. The National Guard Depot is a building that had its roof blown off and has a sky above it. It's actually an interior cell that has a fake sky dome placed on top of it, but originally it was in its own world space. Nearly everything was deleted from the cell, but the nav mesh remains and has some interesting differences from the final version. Most intriguingly, a section that clips outside of bounds of the final location, suggesting it was originally larger. This is probably the explanation for why the second and third cells of the area are missing. In the fourth cell depot training wing, a door's name suggests it led to the cut second level, but it actually leads to the first area National Guard Depot. In the fifth cell depot offices, Another door name states that it leads to the second cell, but again it leads back to National Guard Depot. In this world space, the player's map marker coordinates are far away from the building's final location, near L'Enfant, not far from the marker for Southwest Waterfront. Maybe the exterior of the National Guard Depot was placed in one of these neighborhoods before getting moved to the wasteland. The shaded ground texture beneath its final location suggests there was a row of buildings placed behind National Guard Depot originally, and it's possible they were deleted when it was moved here. The 14th neighborhood was Buzzard Point. Based on an urban area located on the peninsula between the Potomac and Anacostia rivers, the neighborhoods appear to be numbered in conjunction with their position going from north to south. 
For example, Chevy Chase is the first world space and is the northernmost neighborhood, hinting that Buzzard Point would have been the southernmost neighborhood on the east side of the Potomac. Supporting this, a map marker for it can be found out of bounds northwest of Anacostia Station. There is even an intricate road layout shown around the map marker on the world map, but it's missing in both the wasteland and in the nearby remaining neighborhoods. The marker is called DC World 14D, which means it was the fourth map marker tied to the area, insinuating it was a relatively large world space. The Plexa map shows the borders extending further down than they do on the final map, potentially a remnant of Southwest Waterfront and Buzzard Point. An unused AI package would have made a long-deleted NPC guard something while their weapon was equipped in this neighborhood. There is a green water type and a green light type intended for Buzzard Point that's still used in a few locations. They were added immediately after one another and likely would have been used together, perhaps in a particularly irradiated area. The light is only used in Arlington Falls Metro, but the water can be found in a couple spots, including the crater behind Tacoma Industrial. Everything around the crater was added later than the surrounding props, and it's possible it was recycled from Buzzard Point. Behind the rubble around the crater, there's a whole section of wall out of bounds and under the ground. These kit pieces aren't used anywhere else in the neighborhood and could have been copied from Buzzard Point by mistake. There's also more hidden rubble placed out of bounds behind the crater on the other side. While the rest of Tacoma has meticulously placed collision walls, there are strangely none around the crater. This means that you can easily run out of the map in pretty much any direction. All of this could support it being copied over from an unfinished neighborhood, but on the other hand, it might have just been quickly constructed for Tacoma Park at the end of development. The Buzzard Point water is then used again outside a radiated metro in L'Enfant, not far from those houses that have questionable terrain behind them that we covered earlier. Finally, there's a piece of concept art dated September 4th, 2007, that shows an avenue of stacked cars and the Washington Monument in the background, implying it was placed on the eastern side of the Potomac. This is potentially a depiction of Buzzard Point, but it could also be Southwest Waterfront or Freedom Street. The statue in this image does appear in several neighborhoods, but never alongside a building and they're instead used as fountain decorations. Interestingly, it's always scaled down significantly everywhere it's placed. It seems it was originally made so large as to be visible from a distance on the top of a building, but when whatever neighborhood this is was cut, they scaled it down and recycled it. The first 14 neighborhoods comprise the ruins on the east side of the Potomac, and 15 through 26 represent the western side, making up the DC suburbs in Arlington, Virginia. Most of the removed ruins were going to appear on the west side, but in the final game there are only three neighborhoods here. The 15th area is Mason District, based on a real neighborhood east of Arlington, Virginia. It uses the Langley Oaks Encounter Zone, an actual separate neighborhood north of Falls Church. Langley Oaks is never mentioned outside of this, and it might be an early name for the area, or maybe the zones were recycled from a cut neighborhood. There's a building out of bounds on the northern side of Mason District that can normally never be seen. Not far from the flooded metro in Mason, there's a metro entrance covered up by rubble. By disabling the rubble, you'll find some objects behind it that are normally invisible. This metro was hastily covered up when whatever neighborhood it was linked to was scrapped. It might have connected to the mall, as the cell that contains the entrance to hazmat disposal connecting the mall to L'Enfant is named Mall to Mason. 
This is interesting as there's only one metro that crosses the Potomac River. DCTA Tunnel 014-B Potomac, which links Arlington Cemetery to Georgetown. We are dedicated to preserving the history of the Brotherhood, as well as unearthing the secrets of the pre-war civilizations. We have a single field associate, Scribe Yearling. She operates out of the former Library of Congress to the Northeast. Jameson, one of the scribes at the Citadel, mentions that Scribe Yearling is found at the Library of Congress to the Northeast. However, Yearling is actually found at Arlington Library, which is south of the Citadel, and the Library of Congress doesn't even exist. When first talking to Yearling, she says, You're awfully brave to be walking around down here by yourself. Are you scavenging the ruins? Now, this is bizarre because Arlington Library is right across from the Citadel, not in any of the DC ruins. Her dialogue is also titled Freeform DC, a prefix that's only used for neighborhood world spaces, all of which suggests she was originally placed in a separate world space rather than the wasteland. The real-world Library of Congress is found just across the street from the Capitol building. This is speculation, but an early dev map depicts a missing monument or museum beside the Capitol building. If it was planned, it might have been found in or around Seward Square, which would explain Jameson stating yearlings to the northeast. Yearling's side quest revolves around gathering books, and the Library of Congress would have made more sense as an ancient repository of knowledge, as opposed to a local library in Arlington Library. There's an old cell in the inaccessible space behind the Citadel's walls called Arlington Library Old, which is presumably where Arlington was originally placed. Interestingly, the exterior of the Citadel was comically larger than the actual interior. Not only that, but the walls extend much further across the world than shown on the map, and contain a massive, inaccessible area inside of them. Considering the presence of the old Arlington Library cell, it seems likely that at least some of this inaccessible space was a playable area but was walled off when the city was downsized. The Plexa map also shows the borders of the city extending much further around the Pentagon, perhaps encompassing some of the cut western neighborhoods. There's an unused note named Dispatch to Scribe Yearling. It likely would have been found in Arlington Library and reads, Scribe Yearling. Now that Scribe Warswick has been written into the scrolls, I pass his noble task on to you. Journey into the ruins of the city, to the once great Arlington Library. There you will continue to collect, archive, and catalog the written works of the ancients. You will have two paladins sent with you, and you shall be requisitioned an amount of currency in order to barter and trade with outsiders for any bucks they may present to you. Depart immediately and make haste. We cannot afford to have this work interrupted. Yours in steel, Scribe Rothschild. It reveals a previous scribe died attempting to archive the library, and the yearling was there to finish the quest. Interestingly, Warswick is never mentioned outside of this cut note. It mentions that she'll need to journey into the ruins of the city, which doesn't make much sense after it was moved right next to the Citadel, and this might be why the note was left unused. The official guide mentions what appears to be more cut content about Yearling, stating, When you first meet her, she is in this building but may move to the Citadel. Check there if you can't find her. Yearling never leaves the library under any circumstance, but it seems she originally returned to the Citadel once her quest was started, or more likely when it was completed. She's even a part of the Citadel's resident faction, the lone endgame remnant of this cut idea. She mentions that the information is archived and sent back to the Citadel, which might have been the intention of her returning there. We then ship them, under escort, back to the Citadel for transcribing into the archives there. 
Yearling is also one of only three characters in the base game to have a unique combat style. It's strangely used by her dialogue package, which seems to be a remnant from before the library was moved. In the final game, Yearling doesn't even get into combat unless the player attacks her. But maybe you would have seen her get into fights as she traveled between locations. I am Senior Scribe Yearling, Order of the Word. I have a proposal for you, if you're interested. She also states she's a member of the Order of the Word, a group that's never mentioned anywhere else. This might be an early name for the Brotherhood's Order of the Quill, a recording mistake, or an otherwise unused group only referenced in her dialogue. And I found myself among the Quills. Jameson refuses to accept any fact that conflicts with her rose-colored, optimistic views. She likes to assign contradictory personalities to field operations. Take, for example, myself here, or Yearling, exiled to that accursed library. It's worth noting that Bigsley does refer to her as being in the Order of the Quill, but these lines weren't added until the Broken Steel DLC. Finally, there's an unused Pip-Boy image for the library, but its original purpose and the reason why it was cut are a mystery. Towards the bottom of the wasteland, there's a dungeon named Flooded Metro that leads to Mason. Internally, the cell is named Flooded Sewer, and this was likely the original name for the area as there's an unused directory for it. Additionally, several props inside of it are named Flooded Sewer in the gag. I'm guessing the sign was cut because it would be absurd for a pre-war sign to advertise a flooded sewer. The dungeon that connects Arlington Cemetery to the Wasteland is named Arlington slash Wasteland Metro, but the signs outside the entrance in Arlington call it Platts. Confusingly, the map marker in the Wasteland is also named Flooded Metro, giving it three separate names. It's unknown if Arlington slash Wasteland is Platts, if Platts was a cut station that had its art assets recycled here, or if the name was only made after DC was sliced up in an attempt to make a coherent map. But either way, it ended up exceedingly confusing. It seems the one in Mason is the real flooded metro, and the one in Arlington might have been given its name by mistake. Supporting this, the flooded metro that leads to Mason is in fact flooded and populated by Mirelurks. While the fake one in Arlington isn't flooded at all and only has a few goals. There's a wasteland cell south of Greyditch named Flooded Metro which was the original location of the flooded sewer's entrance into Mason. Not far from here, there's another disabled marker inside of a building in an inaccessible area called DC-18A, which is Arlington, suggesting the neighborhood was originally placed here near the Citadel. The marker's data is 15A, meaning it led to Mason, and from that we can infer that Mason and Arlington were both right by the Citadel and interconnected to one another, unlike the final game. When the other neighborhoods were cut, Flooded Metro and Mason District were moved much further down, switching it from the northernmost world space on the east side to the southernmost. Then the cemetery was moved further up. Evidence of the latter can be found in the eastern side of the cemetery, where you can see the citadel is right by the edge of the map. But in the wasteland, it's very far away from Arlington, and not even placed in the same direction as its map marker. The location of the player's map marker while in a world space is controlled by two settings, cell coordinates and cell offset. If we set Arlington's offset data to zero, it ends up right next to the Citadel, at a distance that makes sense given the cemetery's apparent proximity to the Pentagon. Admittedly, I don't think this is a very accurate way of nailing down its original position, but it is a hell of a coincidence. Evidence of Mason's original location is the utility tunnel entrance to Hubris Comics. You enter a culvert placed right next to Wolheim's Wharf and pop out miles to the south in the middle of the city in Mason. Spatially, this makes absolutely no sense, but this entrance wouldn't be all that out of place if Mason District was once near the Citadel. 
If we set Mason's offset data to zero, it's moved much further north, and the location between the sewer entrance and hubris is much more logical. This may be another coincidence, but they also say that two coincidences are a clue. By the wasteland entrance into the real flooded metro, there's various lights, a poster, and a generator out of bounds. The way they're placed makes me think they were used to make the level, but aside from the generator, none of these assets are actually used elsewhere in the area. The tunnel that leads to the exit in Mason is partially collapsed, but behind the rubble there's a hand-placed grate that can never be seen. On the other side, there's a manhole and a skylight above it that can't be seen either. The skylight uses the suburban cloudy emittance type, and the entire area has nav mesh, leading me to suspect there was once a ladder here leading to a cut suburban neighborhood. Arlington slash Wasteland also has a blocked off tunnel that leads to a large inaccessible area featuring a sound marker. It's possible this once led somewhere else, but it could also be strange level design. There are two other exits on the metro map that have no art assets or obvious appearance anywhere, FDR Island and Minuteman. The missing Minuteman station might be the flooded metro in Mason, as both are on the blue line, but there's no other evidence supporting this and I suspect it was outright removed. The only mention of FDR Island is on the metro map, but it might be the flooded metro location in Arlington. FDR Island is most likely based on the real Theodore Roosevelt Island, a national memorial on the Potomac River. It's seemingly the Anchorage Memorial location in-game, as it's the only significant island on the river in DC, and the Arlington slash Wasteland Metro is the nearest station. So it's possible these missing metros are the flooded metros, though they could both represent cut metro stations. Arlington Memorial seems to have been reworked at some point as well, as the second interior cell was made much later than the other three levels. The 16th neighborhood was cut, and its name is unknown as its encounter zone is missing. A disabled marker for it can still be found inside the Citadel near Marigold Station. This isn't far from a disabled marker for Falls Church, meaning the two might have been linked by a metro. DC-16 is the first of several neighborhoods that we don't know the name of, but the main entrance to Ella B Industries reveals the location was originally found there, as opposed to its final appearance in Falls Church. A note there mentions that employees can evacuate the building via the Archive Civic Tunnel. There's nothing like this in the Archives level though, and it only leads back to other parts of the building. Perhaps the Civic Tunnel was removed when it was moved to Falls Church. Notably, the second interior cell of the building is missing, meaning that a section of it might have been removed or at the very least merged into one of the other areas. Strangely, it does have an East Wing cell but no West Wing, meaning that might be the missing level. By merging the interiors together and placing them beside the outside of the building, you can see there was a major disconnect between the two during development. You don't expect interiors to have one-to-one -one accuracy to their exterior, but the difference between the two is outright absurd. A piece of concept art by Adam Adelix depicts this mysterious neighborhood. One of the buildings in it is used in the final game in both Seward Square and Tacoma Park, but its name reveals it was initially a part of this neighborhood, named DC World 16 Building Future. Other aspects of the building's depiction, like the verandas and sky bridge, are either unused or not used in conjunction with the building as Adam originally envisioned. Much of Farragut West Metro was recycled from this neighborhood, as nearly half of the dungeon still uses the DC-16 prefix. The name of the door between the tunnels and office even reveals it originally connected Mason to DC World 16. A test marker outside flooded Metro and Mason also has a marker for the neighborhood, revealing the two were originally connected here as well. 
Almost right beside the marker, there's a phone kiosk. And below the sidewalk, there's a hole in the ground that fits a metro staircase. This might have been the original entrance into the section of Farragut Metro that was recycled from the 16th neighborhood. Farragut West starts in the wasteland near Super Duper Mart and links to Tentley Town slash Friendship Metro Station. This is confusing as the two stations are very far apart from one another, and Friendship Metro already connects to the wasteland at a different exit. In real life, Farragut West is inside DC, only a few blocks from the White House. During a live stream, community manager Matt Grandstaff mentioned this metro was part of an early press demo and was reached by a sewer in Megaton. When we first showed Fallout 3, we had a like a, a chunk of the game that we would show off that started with a vent in Megaton that took you to a subway. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of like a greatest hits of like, here's where we're at with the game or whatever that they showed. I'm pretty sure it led to this subway spot right here, because I showed this part about 300 times. The sewer entrance was even shown in pre-release images. Despite being cut, the shaded ground texture around the entrance was never updated and still remains in the final release. It makes a lot of sense in retrospect the dungeon was utilized in the demo, as one section features a pair of ghouls trapped behind a gate and they're standing directly next to an explosive generator. Another features a laser pistol inside of a locked safe and a nearby terminal to unlock it. And both sections would feel right at home in a tutorial. Just to make things even more confusing, there's a dungeon in the wasteland named Sewer Waystation. Its ID suggests it's a part of the Friendship Metro tunnels, and it's not that far away from Farragut West. However, it only leads to County Mainline Sewer, which is confusingly Friendship Metro 01. Even though there's no clear connection to Tentley Town slash Friendship Metro beyond its name in the gag. Mainline then exits into the wasteland near the Citadel, very far away from Friendship Metro Station. The Waste Station was made much later than County Mainline, and both levels have misaligned compass markers. For example, you enter the Waste Station's back entrance facing southwest and appear inside facing north. It's difficult to theorize on what happened to these dungeons, but perhaps when the 16th neighborhood was cut, one of its metros was recycled into Farragut West. I suspect that both Sewer Waystation and County Mainline were originally connected to the Tentley Town Metro, and were disconnected during the switch as well. This is simply speculation, but it's possible the 16th world space was Chesterbrook. There's a few leftover references to this lost area, which is a real-life city north of Falls Church. It's a conundrum if Chesterbrook was a location in the Wasteland, its own separate neighborhood, or simply the early name of another cut neighborhood. But the real-world location does roughly line up with the map marker for the 16th world space. Two cut members of the Brotherhood were meant to appear there named Paladin Northup and Paladin Bishop. Northup's NPC remains in the files, and Bishop was either deleted or never made. But there are still three unused player lines for him. If you ask Bishop, what were you doing up here, he'd reply, We were looking for Fat Man Ammo. One of the scribes found a reference to a storage box and some old documents. We found the box, all right. And the key. But then the mutants showed up. If I didn't know better, I'd swear that this was a trap. But the only way that those mutants will lay a hand on this key is over my cold, dead body. You could also inquire, what's happening here? What does it look like? We're fighting a losing battle. That's what's happening. They just keep coming. We haven't slept in days. Every couple of hours, more show up. Finally, you could say, I want to help. We will not give up this position and the mutants show no sign of slowing down. The best thing you can do is eliminate any mutants you find. I have no reward to offer you, but my thanks. There's more unused dialogue for Northup, and all of the lines linked to him have a script note that states, Tired, out of breath. You showed up at a bad time, stranger. 
This position is being overrun. I suggest that you head out of here while the muties are focused on us. Why are you still here? I said, go! So long as my brothers stand by my side, there can be no defeat. Let there be no doubt. The might of the Brotherhood prevails. I thought I was about to be written into the scrolls, but we live to fight another day. We don't have a radio. No way to call for help. They nearly wiped us out. So many of them. But the Brotherhood survives. Jesus. They just came out of nowhere. In Northup's only remaining player line, you could state, I need to go. Keep your head low. In summary, the two of them were sent to Chesterbrook to recover an ammunitions cache, but not long after finding the key that unlocked it, they were assaulted by a group of super mutants, forcing them to take up a defensive position to survive. Upon finding them, Bishop would have urged you to leave, but the player could offer their help and kill the mutants laying siege to their position. The freeform prefix of these lines implies it would have been a side quest, but all other elements of it are likely lost forever. The 17th World Space is False Church. Marigold Station is a metro tunnel that starts in Grey Ditch in the Wasteland and leads to False Church. According to the Encounter Zone, the Freeform Citadel quest script, and other assets, it was originally named Mariposa Station. There is no real-world equivalent, and this is seemingly a strange reference to Mariposa Military Base. There is also an unused terminal using the old name that had an option to vent exhaust, which would have enabled an explosive gas trap in the first level of the metro. After the name change, its wasteland entrance was also shuffled around, as there is another cell named Marigold Station found a few cells to the north of the actual entrance near a playground, though it's unknown why it was moved such a short distance. Near Marigold Station's exterior and Falls Church, there is a partially underground road that continues beyond the player's view. The 18th neighborhood is based on Arlington National Cemetery in Virginia. There's a strange out-of-bounds area here that has some kit pieces placed in a dip in the landscape. It's unknown if this is a result of the cut world spaces, an early block out of an area that does appear, or something else entirely. There's a collapsed tunnel not far from Mama Dolce's in Arlington, and the ground texture behind it extends much further than the prop, suggesting the area was reworked. It's possible this was linked to another neighborhood at one point, but there's no telling. Mama Dolce's is a factory in Arlington Cemetery that was used as a front for Chinese communists. If you clip behind the exterior of the building, you'll find an inaccessible working door on the front of the factory. Not far from here, there's a rubble pile beyond a wall that can never be seen, suggesting they might have planned for the front side of it to be explorable. Clipping through the building's exterior on the second floor reveals another working door inside of a wall. There are also two sky bridges that connect to a small section of the factory, and both bridges have a pair of working doors that can never be seen either, for a total of six working out-of-bounds doors. Way out to the east of the factory, there's an out-of-bounds cell called Mama Dolce Dock, and this seems to be the original location of Mama Dolce's. The dungeon connects to an area called Mama Dolce's Loading Yard, which is contained in its own world space, and if you check the Pet Boy map while you're inside of it, you'll see the player marker is very far to the southeast from where Mama Dolce's is actually placed, close to the Falls Church Metro. If the cemetery was further south next to the Citadel originally, the out-of-bounds loading dock cell would roughly match up with the marker, and this appears to be a remnant of it being moved around. There's also a strange locked gate inside of the courtyard that has no corresponding key, and perhaps it once led out into whatever world space it was originally in. But take that with a grain of salt, because we're hitting fake moon landing levels of conspiracy at this point. 
On the left, you can see the courtyard world space is comically larger than the exterior. And looking at them in the GAC, you can see that they're laid out much differently on top of having mismatch sizes. Though again, it's unclear if this is a result of it being moved around, or the level designer not attempting to make the interior and exterior coherent. Finally, there is a named empty cell placed away from the courtyard called M. Dolce, but its original purpose is unknown. The 19th world space is missing, but we know it was named Crystal City, based on a real urban neighborhood in the southeast corner of Arlington, Virginia. Crystal City has unique architecture, featuring an extensive network of underground corridors and shopping centers a setting ripe for a post-apocalyptic environment. Arlington Utility leads to DCTA Tunnel 014-B Potomac, and the exit door to the cemetery inside of it is named DC-19, revealing that Georgetown and Crystal City were once connected here. Several unused signs also confirm the western stop connected to Crystal City. According to two disabled map markers, it would have been found inside the out-of-bounds area behind the Citadel near Alexandria Arms, near the original locations of Mason District and Arlington Cemetery. There's an unused AI package that would have made a Raider Sniper guard a long-deleted linked reference while having their weapon drawn somewhere in Crystal City. There is also an unused directory that would have shown the entrance was nearby. It seems that Crystal City got further along than some of the others considering the leftover assets, but not enough for it to avoid being killed off. The 20th neighborhood was cut and the encounter zone is missing. In Pont Circle, there's a dungeon named Sunken Sewer, and the exit ladder door's name reveals it was once a part of this cut neighborhood. It's the only location that uses the Seven Corners Encounter Zone, and through that we can infer DC-20 with Seven Corners. Based on a real-life commercial area in Virginia just outside of Falls Church city limits, Sunken Sewer is one of the most heavily irradiated sewer levels, and perhaps Seven Corners had dangerous levels of radiation. There are three unused map markers for the location, one in the inaccessible space beyond the Citadel's entrance, another out of bounds behind Alexandria Arms, and the third is near a bombed out building controlled by raiders. The one by the Citadel has a marker named DC-15A, implying it connected to Mason District. There is also an unused AI package for a sniper named after the location, but it's unknown what character would have used it. There's an encounter zone for Alexandria based on a city in Virginia, and this likely would have been the southwesternmost neighborhood. There's a dungeon called Alexandria Arms that appears in the wasteland near the Citadel Southern Wall. It's likely this location was originally placed in Alexandria, as a cell found far to the southeast of the actual location is named Alexandria Arms Exterior. This is near Riverboat Landing, close to the real location of Alexandria, and it's possible the building once connected the wasteland to this lost neighborhood. In the old exterior cell, there's an unmarked location called Sewer, which is one of four locations confusingly named Sewer despite being unrelated to one another. This sewer is a small generic dungeon controlled by raiders, and the door leading into it is named Alexandria Arms Door Exterior to Zero One. The dungeon seemingly has no link to Alexandria Arms in the final game, and I suspect that when the building was moved, this entrance was recycled to lead into a generic dungeon. Alexandria Arms being moved explains why the exterior of the building is completely misaligned, as the stairs, trees, and door don't line up together whatsoever. The interior of Alexandria Arms also has a few notable oddities, like a hallway blocked off by rubble that has some smoke and dust effects placed beneath it out of bounds. 
On the other side of the interior, there's a staircase that descends into another room blocked by rubble, and once again there's another smoke effect placed out of bounds. Presumably there was a basement area at one time that connected to the sewer entrance near Riverboat Landing. The interior cell is even called Alexandria Arm 01, even though there are no other areas, suggesting another section was cut or intended to appear. The name of the 21st world space is a mystery, but there are map markers referencing it. Heading towards the city east of Red Racer, there's a giant inaccessible area blocked by a wall of buildings. The first marker is placed inside of a building in this space, and another is to the southeast, near an out-of-bounds underpass. Operation Anchorage would add a destroyed metro entrance just outside the first marker, which is ironic, as there very well might have been a metro here earlier in development. Not far from here, there's sidewalk and rubble out of bounds that's typically covered up by other props. It's possible this was an insignificant cut alleyway or somehow related to DC-21, but either way, more of this area was originally playable. There's a cut interior called Potomac Steamworks, and its internal name is DC Interior 17-21 revealing it connected Falls Church to this mysterious neighborhood. It's not all that far from being finished, and already has sound markers, nav mesh, enemies, lighting, a sewer exit, and a very intricate pipe system. Essentially, the only things missing are visual effects, props, and items, and I'm surprised this wasn't recycled in some way. There's a random door frame hidden out of bounds, maybe leading to a lost area or from an earlier iteration of the location. Its form ID suggests it was removed much later than many of the other neighborhoods, and implies they were cut one by one instead of all at once. The name of the 23rd neighborhood is also a mystery, but there are disabled markers for it in the wasteland, found a bit to the east and west of the real flooded metro along the same stretch of highway. I've skipped four name-cut neighborhoods, as we know almost nothing about them apart from that they would have been on the western side of the Potomac. There's no concept art attributed to them and few mentions of them beyond their encounter zones. These are Holmes Run, Jefferson District, Anandale, and Monticello Park. It's unknown if these were cut before much work had been done, or if their content was thoroughly deleted. Monticello Park is based off of a real 15-acre park in Alexandria, and the only leftover is an unused water type intended for the area. Anandale is an actual, census-designated place southeast of Falls Church. The unmarked Talon Company camp location near Greyditch was originally placed in Anandale and is still named Anandale Talon HQ, but there is no other remnant of the neighborhood. Both Anandale and Seven Corners are a part of Mason District in real life, and perhaps they would have been linked in-game too. Holmes Run was named after a real urban river in between Anansdale and Alexandria, but only its encounter zone remains. Jefferson District seems to have been named after a park in Falls Church, but again, only the encounter zone is left over. A piece of concept art depicts a curved road running past some residential buildings unlike any area in game. The cliffs and highway underpass links this to the west side of the Potomac, and this image could possibly represent Holmes Run, Anandale, or Monticello Park. Another pair of interesting images by Adam Adelix seemingly depict different iterations of a cut neighborhood, as it doesn't resemble anything found in game but it's unknown what area this was intended to be. There are only 24 DC encounter zones, but we know there were originally two more neighborhoods. This suggests the last two neighborhoods were cut very early prior to the major culling of other areas, before even having an encounter zone made for them. There's still a map marker for the 25th neighborhood placed underneath some rubble right outside the entrance to Alexandria Arms. There's no remnant of the last world space, 
but if the neighborhood numbering was made from the top down, it would have been the southernmost suburb in Virginia. Unfortunately, these locations will likely always remain a complete and total mystery. If you clip past the wall of buildings around DC and the wasteland, you'll find some interesting oddities. Not far from the Tacoma Industrial Map Marker, there's a section of monorail platform. To the south, there's even more platforms placed inside of a building, and a section underground. Nearby, there's another underground platform, and then another platform inside of an LOD building. To the north, there's yet another long section completely underground. The location of these assets roughly matches an early image in the game files, a satellite photo of DC that has a game map layered on top of it. The monorail lines are depicted by a yellow line, and it shows them starting at the northeastern edge of the city before splitting off. One section went along the western edge of the Potomac to the edge of the map, while the other crossed the river into Virginia and exited at the southern border. In the final game, the monorail lines don't fork until much later, and instead run to the north and northwestern edges of the map. There's still orphan sections of the original monorail layout between Great Edge and the Citadel, but it abruptly stops near the river. Some sections of it are partially visible from the playable area, but others are so far out of view they don't even render unless you clip out of bounds. The monorail ends behind the Citadel, but another hidden platform can be found underground by Alexandria Arms a remnant of it running through the whole western section of the city. It doesn't pick back up until far south of Riverboat Landing, where it crosses the river and ends inside the curtain wall near Rivet City, well outside the playable area. Despite being mostly cut from DC and the Wasteland, the eastern section can still be seen in neighborhoods like Seaward, Dupont, and Chevy Chase, while the western section is present in Falls Church. The southwestern sections in the Wasteland were added much later than the out-of-bounds pieces in northwestern DC, and might have been added in an attempt to make the monorail in those neighborhoods actually make sense. I'm guessing they realized that much of the monorail wouldn't have been visible when placed behind buildings, and then mostly cut the section that ran across both sides of the city. Way, way off the map to the southeast, there's a textured path out in the middle of nowhere, maybe from an earlier block out. The buildings back here all have unseen rubble piles beside them that are covered up by buildings closer to the map. Beyond the curtain wall, there's also many LOD buildings that can't be seen, but it's difficult to speculate on how they ended up here. Finally, the urban building kids skip over quite a few entries suggesting that more buildings intended for DC existed at one point before being removed from the game files entirely. While the franchise has a plethora of partially implemented grand ideas, there's really nothing else that was completed to this scale and then totally nuked out of existence, leaving only small traces of the city's once-envisioned grandeur in map markers, door names, buried roads, blocked-off metro entrances, and out-of-bounds oddities resulting in a riddle so esoteric that it's still being unraveled over a decade after its release. Cutting them was undoubtedly the right decision, but you can't help but wonder how differently DC would be if it was not only twice as large, but could be navigated in an intuitive way. Bethesda's plans for the DC ruins were overly ambitious in the end and even the remaining half of the city could have used more development time to make it more coherent. Despite those issues, it is an achievement nonetheless, and in my opinion, DC contains the overall best environmental design of any area in the series. A richly detailed, maze-like apocalyptic city that had only been depicted in images and cinematics in previous entries. There are so many ways I could end this video, but Joel Burgess already said it best, mentioning, quote,
We also fill DC with small stories to help build the larger arc of the player's experience. These stories are side quests from our quest designers, traditional levels with their own secrets to uncover, or one of numerous terminals, notes, or recordings. Fallout is a world rife with the unfinished tales of lives cut short by nuclear holocaust, as well as those of unlucky survivors who scrabble out a meager life from such dire circumstances. With such a deep well from which to draw inspiration, time was the only limit on how many tales could be told. DC is full of those stories, told through any combination of text, dialogue, or more subtle venues. We set out to blur the lines with Fallout 3's level design, and building DC was our greatest experiment, entailing every aspect of our craft from the granular to the grand. We hope that, in some small way, it can change the way you look at RPGs and game worlds in general. When you venture past that threshold of safety and plunge into that ruined metropolis for the first time, Keep your wits sharp and your eyes open. The wasteland may be dangerous, but the ruins are a new experience altogether. Let us know what you think when you emerge, eyes blinking, on the other side.